This is a case of NKJ, 67 year old male from Laurel, Batangas, a married Filipino and a retired accountant with right handedness. He's an outpatient at the MMC. His referring physician is Dr. JPM. Date of referral was on August 18, 2017. Physiatrist is Dr. FAM. And date of initial evaluation is August 19. Informant is the patient. And the, di the diagnosis is idiopathic Parkinson's disease, stage 3 of Hohen Yars scale. So, to define Parkinson's disease, um, first by Sullivan. Um, according to Sullivan, Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder of the central nervous system with both motor and non-motor symptoms. Motor symptoms include the cardinal features of rigidity, bradykinesia, tremor, and in later stages, postural instability. Non-motor symptoms may precede the onset of motor symptoms by years. Early symptoms can include loss of sense of smell, constipation, rapid eye movement, sleep behavior disorder, mood disorders, and orthostatic hypotension. But for Delisa, um, in the book Delisa, Parkinson's disease is described as a chronic progressive neurological disease which at various stages and manifestations affects all aspects of a patient's functional state. Um, Parkinson's disease was first described by James Parkinson as the shaking palsy or the paralysis adjutants in 1817 to represent what would later be referred to as Parkinson's disease. The progressive central nervous system impairment that is characterized by the presence of two or more cardinal signs, bradykinesia, resting tremor, rigidity, and postural instability. So in the Lisa and Sullivan, we have both the cardinal signs, the four cardinal signs, and Delisa only emphasizes that um, in Parkinson's disease, um, at various stages, manifest manifestations can affect the patient's functional state. So, you know, the legality. According to Sullivan, more than 2% of people older than 65 years of age have PD. Um, second only to Alzheimer's disease, among your neurodegenerative disorders. The average on age of onset is 50 to 60 years. Only 4% to 10% of patients are diagnosed with early onset PD, uh, less than 40 years of age. Young onset PD is classified as beginning between 21 and 40 years of age. Juvenile onset PD affects individuals less than 20 years of age. According to the LISA 2011, Parkinson's disease affects roughly 1% of the population older than age 50 in the United States. Incidence increases with age and the peak onset occurs in the 6th to 8th decade, making it one of the most common chronic diseases of adulthood. So according to a journal entitled Incidence of Parkinson's Disease, Variation by Age, Gender, and Race Ethnicity, the incidence rapidly increased over the age of 60 years with only 4% of the cases being under the age of 50 years. So according again to the journal entitled Incidence of Parkinson's Disease, Variation by Age, Gender, and Race Ethnicity, the rate for men was 91% higher than that for women. The age and gender adjusted rate per 100,000 was highest among Hispanics, followed by non-Hispanic whites, Asian, so Asian yung ating patient, and Blacks. This data suggests that the incidence of Parkinson's disease varies by race and ethnicity. So when it comes to nationality, uh, according to Sullivan 2014, PD is a common disease that affects an estimated 1 million Americans and an estimated 7 to 10 million people worldwide. Etiology of Parkinson's disease Parkinsonism. So Parkinsonism is a term is a generic term used to describe a group of disorders with primary disturbances in the dopamine systems of basal ganglia. Genetic and environmental influences have been identified. So yung Parkinsonism, um, ano siya, parang broad term siya na nag-describe sa mga um, disturbances na sa basal ganglia. So meron tayong um, primary Parkinsonism and secondary Parkinsonism. So, par primary Parkinsonism or the um, Parkinson's disease, also called idiopathic Parkinsonism, 
is the most common form affecting approximately 78% of patients. In, sec in secondary Parkinsonism, it is result from a number of different identifiable causes including viruses, toxins, drugs, tumors, and so forth. So, in secondary Parkinsonism, meron tayong cause na nag-trigger para ma-acquire para magkaroon ng Parkinson's disease. Pero din sa Parkinson's disease, idiopathic siya, wala siyang known cause na nag-trigger din sa Parkinson's disease. So, we have secondary Parkinsonism. First is post-encephalitic Parkinsonism. So, sabi kasi, noong 1917 and 19, 1917 to 1926, 26, nagkaroon ng influ influenza epidemics of encephalitis lethargica. Tapos, noong true time, parang nagkaroon sila ng, ng research na yung mga naka-acquire no, noong, noong um, influenza epidemics na yun, noong time na yun, noong tumanda sila, na, meron silang Parkinsonism. So, pero, ngayon, hindi na siya nakikita and parang tinugma lang nila yon dun sa epidemics na nangyari noong 1917 to 1926. Um, so, yung post-encephalitic Parkinsonism caused siya ng virus illness. Yung toxic Parkinsonism naman, um, yan yung um, nag nagkakaroon ng exposure ng isang tao sa sa mga toxics like pesticides, industrial chemicals. Ang pinaka-most common daw na industrial chemicals ay manganese. Sabi, hindi daw sapat na simple exposure lang yung um, simple exposure sa chemicals is not enough to trigger or to cause Parkinson's disease. We have the third is drug-induced drug Parkinsonism or the DIP. Meron kasi tayong drugs na um, nakakapag-produce ng extra pyramidal dysfunctions tapos ginagaya niya yung signs and symptoms ng Parkinson's disease. So, yung Parkinson plus syndromes naman, um, yan yung minimimik din niya yung signs and symptoms ng Parkinson's disease pero mayroong ibang underlying neuro neurologic conditions or um, neurodegenerative disorders. We have Striatonigral degeneration, Shy Dragger syndrome, progressive supranuclear palsy, olivopontos cerebellar atrophy, and cortical basal ganglionic degeneration. So, ito, uh, ang ginagawa, di ba sila lahat is minimimik nila yung signs and symptoms ng Parkinson's disease. Ididifferential natin siya sa Parkinson's disease by a test. So, ang tawag dun sa test na yun is apomorphin test. Yung apomorphin test, um, ang ginagawa doon, nag-administer ng anti-Parkinson medication, katulad ng uh, levodo levodopa, tapos titingnan kung may significant effect or mag-subside yung signs and symptoms nila. Pag nag-subside yung signs and symptoms nila, ibig sabihin, Parkinson's disease yun. Pero, kung hindi nag-subside, ibig sabihin, is, ano siya, sa Parkinson plus syndrome siya, kasi... Ang anti-Parkinson medication, such as levodopa, kapag, in kapag in-administer mo sa individual with Parkinson's disease, uh, mag mag oh, maglalesen yung or mawawala yung signs and symptoms niya. Parkinson's disease, also known as the shaking palsy, it can be idiopathic or genetically determined. So we have two clinical subgroups. Um, first is the postural instability gait disturb or the PIGD and tremor predominant. So, um, dito, pwedeng uh, pinaka main problem sa patient is yung posture instability at gait disturb. So, uh, may, palagi siyang may risk of falls, tapos may postural deviations. Pero sa tremor predominant, um, Ang pinaka-main feature nito sa patient ay yung tremor. Sabi, patients who are, who are tremor predominant typically demonstrate few problems with bradykinesia or postural instability. So, big sabihin, um, pag tremor predominant yung patient, mas less yung risk of fall niya at saka yung pagkakaroon niya ng um, postural instabilities. So, for the genetic forms of PD, it represents 
less than 10% of cases overall. So, yung genetic forms, yun yung ano, um, genetic yung na nakuha natin sa family. So, 10% lang siya ng overall cases ng Parkinson's disease. Genes have been grouped into two categories. We have the causal genes and the associated genes. Yung causal genes, yun yung, um, yung genes na kaya talaga mag-produce ng Parkinson's disease. Pero yung associated genes, yan yung genes na hindi siya directly nagkakos ng PD, pero nag increase ng risk na mag-acquire ka ng PD. How in your classification of disability? Um, stage 1, minimal or absent, unilateral if present. So, yung minimal or absent, ito yung cardinal signs ng Parkinson's disease. Pwede uh, meron kang, may minimal tremor ka, or minimal tremor ka sa isang side ng katawan, tapos sa stage 2, minimal bilateral or midlife involvement, balance not impaired. Meron kang um, affectation sa both both um, limbs mo or both sides of the body, tapos kasama na yung sa trunk. So, dito, meron ka ng postural deviation, which is the stoop posture, pero yung balance mo, hindi pa siya impaired. Ngayon, um, sa stage 3 naman, impaired writing reflexes. So, yung writing reflexes natin, um, this is for equilibrium and balance. Kung sa stage 2, balance is not impaired. Sa stage 3, uh, basically, na, basically, impaired na yung balance dito ng, ng individual. Unsteadiness when turning or rising from chair. Some activities are restricted but patient can live independently and continue some forms of employment. Um, sa stage 3 kasi, kaya pa ng patient mag-ABLs in independently pero um, maybe sa ibang aspects, mer meron siyang restrictions. Sa stage 4, all symptoms present and severe, standing and walking possible only with assistance. So dito, uh, hindi na niya kailang, hindi niya na kaya mag-independent sa maging independent sa ADS niya. Especially standing standing and walking. So ito kailangan na siya ng kailangan na niya ng assistance. Sa so, stage 5, confined to bed or wheelchair. So ayun, yun na. Parang hindi na siya nagalaw and hindi na niya kayang tumayo pa. History of present illness. Two years PTIE, patient noticed uncontrolled finger movements on right hand. Uncontro uncontrolled movements occasionally appear, thinking it was due to fatigue from cleaning the backyard. That's why the patient ignored it. Patient continued on his daily routine, like reading newspaper in the morning, cleaning the yard, and resting in his rocking chair after. One year, six months, PTIE, the patient still experienced finger movements now in both right and left hands during a rest. Patient observed his right hands became smaller and smaller while answering the crossword puzzle, crossword puzzle in newspapers. This time, the patient's wife observed abnormal facial expression, having poker face, which seemed awkward even during joke times. Patient's wife observed during sleep that the patient talked, yelled, punched, and kicked as if enacting his dreams. The wife didn't find it since it has already been a way of patient's sleeping behavior. Patient experienced slowness of movement when cleaning the yard and took time for him to process the information when reading the newspapers. One year PTIE, the, the uncontrolled finger movements became became uncontrolled movements of the hand. Patient also encountered problems with walking on hallways and even fall in equal surfaces. Inability to complete the normal physical tasks became apparent such as cleaning the backyard became difficult due to inability to maintain balance. Patient complains of heaviness and stiffness of his all four limbs. During eating, patient usually choke, drools, and presents abnormal tongue control and problems with chewing. One month PTIE, patient noticed uncontrolled movement, movements increase which made it hard to perform necessary activities like eating and drinking with difficulty in sipping water. The patient also noticed that his balance is always off even more when reaching for something, he will just fall unexpectedly. 
Patient experience abnormal and comfortable sensations of warmth and coldness. Patient also experience difficulty during self-initiated movements like walking and turning. Two days PTIE, patient felt excessive sweating and had an itchy rash on scalp which prompted him to consult to Dr. JPM. Patient's thorough history was asked by the doctor and diagnosed to have an idiopathic, uh, idiopathic Parkinsonism. Patient was referred to rehab under Dr. Fa, Dr. FAM for further evaluation and treatment. Is there, in Parkinson's disease, there is no uh, there is no apparent or there is no certain ancillary, ancillary procedure that can diagnose Parkinson's disease. What what a doctor will do will have the patient will ask the patient a thorough, a thorough history in order to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So in present medication take, taken, we have levodopa, cinnamon, 25 mg twice a day, indicated for tremor, bradykinesia, rigidity, and postural instability. Side effects can be dystonia, abnormal involuntary movement, nausea, vomiting, confusion, dreams, and hallucinations. Past medical history, so um, there's no hypertension, no hospitalization, Alzheimer, no Alzheimer's disease, no history of pulmonary disease, cardiovascular disease, DM, cerebellar disease, CVA, and allergies. So for the family history, there's no familial history of Parkinson's disease, pulmonary disease, both maternal and pater paternal, diabetes, hypertension, um, positive for paternal. Uh, personal, social, environmental history. Patient is a non-smoker, is an alcoholic drinker, at least two bottles of beer once a month, is a retired accountant, has extrovert personality, loves reading newspaper every morning, loves waters the garden every day, is attending mass every Sunday with his wife, is fi financially stable, usually cleans the backyard, patient lives with his wife and the son, Patients live in a bungalow house with two rooms, one bedroom, all with round door knobs. With, round, with rough floor surfaces from the living room, it consists of 20 steps to the kitchen, 20 steps to the comfort room, and 30 steps to the bedrooms. Um, uh, tataas. So here, we can see na non-smoker siya, tas yung... yung Diba, retired accountant siya. So, hindi natin siya pwede sabihin na yung job niya dati is merong toxic or toxin expo toxic expo toxin exposure dun sa past life niya. So, hindi siya pwede. So, dito, para makikita natin na wala talaga yung nag-trigger ng sa HPI, tsaka sa baba, so, until personal, social, environmental history, wala tayong nakikitang factors na nag-trigger sa Parkinson's disease niya. Familial, walang, walang genetic na Parkinson's disease. So, um, ayun. So, ang diagnosis niya is idiopathic. Wala, hindi natin alam kung ano yung nag ng Parkinson's disease niya. For the, for, so, for the objective, um, BP findings before 110 over 70 during treatment, 120 over 80. After treatment, 130 over 90. And the highest PP taken is 140 over 100 on August 20, 2017. For the pulse rate, um, 75 ppm. Respiratory is 15 cpm. Temperature is 37.4 degrees Celsius. So patient has a normal vital sign, vital sign during the treatment session. Only increase of 20 mmHg taken after treatment due to exercise. So, ocular inspection. Patient is ambulatory without assistive device with one assist. Patient is alert, coherent, cooperative, oriented, person, place, time, situation. Patient is ectomorph. Patient has hypomemia. Uh, hypomemia, yun yung sa ano, mask facial expression. Um, there's resting tremor on both hands. Patient has bradykinesia, seborrhea, and seborrhea, seborrhea and seborrhea, 
Rape Dermatitis. So, ito yung um, may skin irritation na namumula. Tapos, yung sa seborrhea, mayroong increase, increase ng secretion ng sebaceous glands. So, common siya sa scalp. Um, patient has hypokinetic dysarthria. So, meron siya, yung patient natin is merong problema sa control ng tone. So, decrease yung voice volume, monotone, monopitch speech, at saka um, uncontrolled yung speech rate niya. So, minsan, um, nagsasali... Uh, hindi niya makontrol yung boses niya. Medyo malakas or minsan mahina. Uh, sa patient natin is mahina. Hypokinetic dysarthria. So, patient has micrographia, C unified Parkinson disease rating scale, Fa patient has dysphagia, patient has postural deviation, C postural analysis, patient has get gait deviation, C gait analysis, um, patient ha um, has negative visual spatial impairment, dry eyes, um, so, yung dry eyes kasi, negative siya sa patient, pero per, uh, pwede siyang magkaroon sa PD kasi yung um, mask facial expression ng uh, individual with PD, so, nakaka-apekto yun sa eyes kasi yung decrease ng blinking ng eyes nila, pwede maapektuhan yung eyes natin. So, pag, kunyari, uh, pag hindi kasi nagbiblink yung eyes masyado, Ang tendency noon, yung eyes natin magda-dry kasi hindi siya, hindi siya, ano ba yun? Decrease yung movement sa eyes niya. Negative swelling on both upper and lower extremities. Negative deformity on both upper and lower extremities. So, for the palpation, um, normal thermic on all exposed body areas. Um, there's no dislocation and subluxation on all exposed body areas. Um, negative edema on both lower leg. Negative disuse, muscle atrophy, and there is no tenderness on all exposed body areas. Range of motion. All major joints of head, trunk, both uppers and lower extremities are within normal limit. Active then possibly done pain-free with normal end flows except for the following joints. Um, so, there is an LOM on shoulder flexion, abduction, adduction, elbow flexion, hip flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation, knee flexion, and knee extension due to, te due to chest wall tightness and smooth stoop posture. FMS. Patient was able to do deep squat, kernel step, in inline lunge, shoulder mobility, active SLR, trunk stability, push up. And rotary stability but compensates in some way. DTR. So findings. Patient our patient has normal reflexive. It's normal reflexive on both uppers and lower extremities. So we decided as a group to assess the sensory uh, since coma sa PD patient na makaramdam ng paresthesia and pain gawa na may affectation sa central loss receptor. So, all superficial, deep, combined, cortical sensation was tested and was noted to be within normal limits except for the following. Um, so, for the significance in the, in the pain sensation, impaired sensory motor integration, patient felt pain, paresthesias, and numbness even without the test. For the light touch, Impaired sensory motor integration, patient felt paresthesias and numbness even without the test due to affectation of central nociception. Then for the pressure, impaired sensory integration, patient felt pain, paresthesias, and numbness even without the test due to affectation of central nociception. For the deep sensation, such as kinesthesia, the significance is impaired kinesthetic sensation due to central nociception. For proprioception, impaired proprioception sensation due to central nociception affectation. Then for vibration, it has the same significance as um, 
in kinesthesia and proprioception. For confined cortical sensation, stereognosis perception, findings, the patient was able to name the object verbally. For two-point discrimination, the patient was able to identify the perception of one or two stimuli. Crophysthesia, the patient can identify the stimulus. Barognosis, the patient can compare the weight of objects in a series. So for findings, patient sensory integration is impaired due to central nociception affectation in Parkinson disease. Reflexes. All spinal reflexes, particle reflexes, association reactions are noted to be with normal limit except for the following. So for the tonic brainstem reflexes, negative for APNR, SPNR, and symmetrical tonic labyrinth and reflex. So in Parkinson's disease, there is absence of labyrinthine reflex or um, your reflex for maintaining balance and equilibrium. That is the most that is the most important reflex in Parkinson's disease, the labyrinthine reflex. Because as we can, as we all know in Parkinson's disease there is um, decrease in maintaining equilibrium and balance. Findings patient is negative in APNR STNR Symmetrical tonic labyrinthine reflex, pathologic reflexes. Patient is negative in Hoffman sign, Promner sign, Shadok sign, Dodinsky sign due to intact upper motor neuron. Balance. Patient is able to maintain balance without handhold support, limited postural sway, and accepts moderate challenge. Able to maintain balance while picking object of floor in sitting, sitting in a normal comfortable position, to standing in a normal comfortable position. Patient is able to maintain balance with handhold support and may require minimal assistance, accepts minimal challenge, and able to maintain balance while turning head and trunk in the following activities. Standing, standing feet together, walking, click. Walking, placing feet on floor markers, march in place, step over or around obstacles, stair climbing with handrail, one step at a time, and step over step. Patient requires handhold support and moderate maximal assistance to maintain position, but unable to accept challenge or move without loss of balance in the following activities. Standing on one foot, tandem position, multidirectional functional reach, and walk in sideways, backwards, and stair climbing with hand, without handrails. Patient is unable to maintain balance during Romberg test, sharpened Romberg test, and walk on foot, walk on heels and toes. All coordination activity for both upper and lower extremities were tested and in the normal limit except for the following. Patient shows moderate impairment characterized by ability to do the activity, but movements are, movement are slow, awkward, and unsteady. In finger to nose and to the and to the therapist's finger, finger to finger, alternate nose to finger, pronation to pronation, tapping of head and foot, pointing and fast pointing, alternate heel to knee, heel to toe, and toe to examiner's finger, heel on chain, and fixation on upper and lower extremities. Patient shows severe impairment that characterized by ability only to initiate activity without completion. And movements are slow with significant unsteadiness, oscillation, and extraneous movements in the following activities. Finger opposition, mass grasp, rhythm phenomenon, drawing circle using hand and foot. So, significance, deficiency of dopamine in areas of the midbrain causing a variety of movement problems such as akinesia, rigidity, and tremor. Unified Parkinson's disease rating scale. So, this, is, this scale this scale rates the disability of the patient in different aspects. So we have meditation, behavior, and mood. Under that is intellectual impairment. So our patient is grade here is zero. Thought, disor thought disorder, also zero. Depression, our patient is graded one. And in motivation or initiative, our patient is also graded one. In activities of daily living, for both on and off, so on and off means on state 
on state means the patient is on medication. So if the patient is in medica is on on state or in medication, the signs and symptoms or the manifestations of Parkinson's disease decreases. So from activities of daily living, we have speech, salivation, swallowing, um, handwriting, cutting food, handling utensils, dressing, hygiene, turning in bed and adjusting bed clothes, falling, pleasing when walking, walking, tremor, sensory complaints related to Parkinson, second related to Parkinson's Parkinsonism, we, our patient's grade is 2. So, just look for the legends for each category. For the modern examination, we have speech, facial expression, tremor at rest, action or postural tremor of hands, rigidity, fingertips, hand movements, rapid alternating movements of hands, Leg agility arising from chair, posture, gait, postural stability, body body kinesia, and hypokinesia. Our patient is also graded too. That is on the on state. So from the ADLs up to here, um, our patient's grade in off state is one. Tolerance test. Patient has poor plus sitting and poor standing tolerance. Postural analysis. So in the anterior view, the only significant, the only aspect that has significant findings is the shoulders protracted. Okay, down. In the lateral view, um, the head is for, forward, mandible in resting position. There is a slight protrusion of the scapula. There is an increased thoracic kyphosis and decreased lumbar lordosis. The pelvis is in anterior tilt and is slightly flexed. Feet has normal longitudinal arc. In the posterior view, we have the only the significant findings here are the spine, the thoracic kyphosis, and um, pertinent medical history is Parkinson's disease. Findings: patient has a stooped posture. Gait analysis. So for the gait parameters. For the cadence, we have 65 steps per minute, which is characterized as slow, stride, 75 strides per minute, 50 centimeters is stride length, 25 centimeters is step length, and 5 centimeters is step width, and the arm sink is decreased. Patient with slow cadence in swing phase and stand phase, increased stride, decreased stride length, and decreased arm swing due to anteropulsive fascinating gait. Functional independence measure. So we have patient has modified independence in self-care, sphincter control, and transfers. Patient needs supervision in problem solving and memory. Patient needs minimal assistance in communication and social interaction. Assessment. PT impression. Patient complaints of tremor in both hands, prodicinesia, rigidity, and postural instability. Patient has a normal vital signs during the treatment session. LOM on both upper extremities. Normal reflexive on both upper and Lower extremities, patient sensory integration is impaired due to affectation of some central nociception. Patient superficial sensation is impaired while deep sensation and combined particle sensation is intact. Patient is negative in ATNR, STNR, symmetrical tonic labyrinthine reflex. Patient all spinal reflexes, reflexes, particle reflexes, and association re reactions are noted to be within normal limit. Patient pathologic reflex and association reactions is not impaired. Patient has affectation on cranial nerves 1, 2, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Patient is able to maintain balance with handhold support, limited postural sway, and accepts moderate challenge, able to maintain balance while picking object off the floor in sitting in a normal comfortable position, standing in a normal comfortable posture. Patient is able to maintain balance with handhold support and may require minimal assistance, accepts minimal challenge and able to maintain balance, able to maintain balance while turning head and trunk in the following activity. Standing, feet together, walking, placing feet on floor markers, march in place, step over or around obstacles, stair climbing, 
with handrail, one step at a time and step over step. Patient requires handhold support and moderate maximal assistance to maintain position, but unable to accept challenge or move without loss of balance in the following activities. Standing on one foot, tandem position, multi-directional functional reach, walking in sideways, backwards, stair climbing without handrails. Patient is unable to maintain balance during rubber test and sharpened rubber test and walk on heels and on toes. Deficiency of dopamine in areas of the midbrain causing variety of movement problems such as acromesia, rigidity, and tremor. Patient has, patient has poor plus sitting and poor static tolerance and patient presents stiff posture and has an anteropulsive fascinating gait. Patient has modified independence in self-care, sphincter control, and transfers. Patient needs supervision in problem solving and memory. Patient needs minimal assistance in communication and social interaction. Rehab potential. Patient is a 67-year-old male diagnosed with idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Onset of the disease according to history is 65 years old. In the univariate analysis, agent baseline was associated with degree survival. Late agent disease onset and advanced chronolo chronological age are associated with decreased survival. Re patient presents parkinsonal signs, tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, and postural instability. <coughs> patient is in stage three of Hohenyer scale classification of disability characterized by impaired writing reflexes and steadiness when turning or rising from chair. Some activities are restricted, but patients can live independently and continue some forms of employment. Patient has risk of falls that can contribute to difficulty in performing ADLs. Patient has took posture and has presence of fascinating gait. Episodes of freezing and difficulty in turning. Patient is under levodopa ter therapy, which can slow the progression of the disease. Patient is willing to undergo rehabilitation and has a supportive family. So the only positive Positive, um, positive thing here is that patient is under levodopa therapy and that's his willingness to undergo therapy. But overall, for the manifestations and according to some researches, which patients, which the patient has in for the prognosticating factors like age, uh, the presence of the four cardinal signs, uh, the patient presents a poor prognosis. PD plan. P patient will be seen in the clinic five times a week and achieve the following goals within 12 to 16 treatment sessions in six months. Deep breathing exercises. First, day of pragmatic breathing. Supine one hand on chest, the other hand on the abdomen. Repeat 10 times. For the flexibi flexibility exercises, for 10 minutes, 3 to 4 times per week, times 10 to 30 seconds, hold 3 to 4 reps. So for the chest wall, um, stand facing a wall with feet above a foot from the wall. Place hands as high up to the wall as possible. Keep head in line with back. Gently lean forward so that the nose touches the wall. Don't arc back. Feel the stretch in shoulder and chest, then hold for 10 se seconds. For the shoulder and elbow flexors, sitting or standing, bend the arms while holding a stick, then extend. Stand in a doorway, bend right arm or Left arm, rest, hand and forearm on the door frame. Gently turn whole body to the left. Do not overstretch. Relax the muscle in the shoulder. Hold for 10 seconds and repeat the other way. For the hamstring, sitting. In sitting position, bend and extend the knees. Point and flex the feet. For the calf muscles, sit on the edge of a chair. Move right foot back under the chair so that the heel is slightly off the floor. Place hands on right knee and press down until the heel touches the floor. Allow calf muscle to relax. Hold for 10 seconds. Repeat with the opposite foot. For the wrist and hand flexors, hold a pen stable in one hand. Press the ball into the V space between each pair of the fingers. Repeat with the other hand. Continue for 2 minutes. For the flexibility exercise of the low back and neck, sit tall on the edge of the a seat, turn shoulders to the right, reach right hand behind you and stretch it towards the left hip. Turn head and body as well, relax muscle and hold position for 10 seconds. 
Repeat the other way. Aerobic exercise times 30 minutes per day, so it can be split into segments. Um, stationary bicycle, dance, and swimming. For the balance exercises we have for standing, stand with a bed or couch behind and a sturdy chair next to you. Place two large soap cans or heavy containers on the floor in front of you. Shift your weight onto one leg, lift the other leg. Lift the other leg up so that your foot tops the can or the container, then bring it down. Switch to the other leg and repeat. In standing, with feet slightly apart, shift weight from one hip to another. Standing using a chair for support, swing one leg back and forth, repeat with the other leg. For the tandem stance, um, single leg stance. Uh, safe movement techniques, sitting in a chair, standing up from a chair. Sit to stand. Posture, standing, press back against a wall, moving shoulder blades backward. Keep head straight and chin tuck in. 30 sec hold for 30 seconds and then relax. Repeat for 6 to 8 times. So if you want to progress, put the small foam ball behind the head, hold it in place against the wall of the patient's head. For coordination with the presence of visual aids, sitting, simultaneously lift left arm to the side and raise right knee. Relax, simultaneously lift right arm to the side and raise left knee. Alternate the movements, repeat 10 to 12 times. Place hand on thighs, one palm up and the other palm down. Alternately switch the position of the hands, gradually increase the speed. So repeat 10 to 12 times. Stepping over obstacles. So another. For the manual dexterity, um, touch each finger in turn to the thumb, alternate the left and the right hands or do both at the same time. Repeat 10 to 12 times. Sitting and standing, make a tight piece, open the hand and extend it completely. Alternate the left and right hand or do both at the same time. Repeat 10 times. Um, in sitting position with a visual aid, like mirror, make an exaggerated smile showing teeth. Pretend to drink from a straw. Blow out the cheeks simultaneously or alternately. From. Stretch tongue up and down from side to side. Up, up. So, make an E sound or an O sound. Alternate two sounds, repeat ten times. Like E, O, E, O. Walking, um, two to three minutes or longer according to tolerance. Walk in place, lifting the knee as high as possible. Swing arms back and forth in an exaggerated manner. Keep your head straight, looking far ahead. Strengthening exercises. Sitting with one to three kilograms weight on wrist, ten times for each arm. Extend and bend the left arm. Repeat the exercise with the right arm. Um, for the ankles, um, 1 to 2 kilograms then, 10, 10 times for each leg. Extend, then bend the leg, bend the leg, left leg, repeat the exercise for each leg. Sit or stand tall, keep, so for the elbow, sit or stand tall, keep elbows to 90 degrees. Pull shoulder, shoulder blades together in the back, then push hands apart or out to the sides while keeping elbows close to the body. For the relaxation techniques, Lying down comfortably, close eyes, and try to relax by listening to soft music, imagining a pleasant place or moment. So we have also endurance exercises, march, marching, marching, or marching around the room, ten step, march with ten with long steps, march ten steps, ten steps, and then march and swing arms ten steps. Pace walking can be used in treadmill walking at different speeds and different inclines. So we can use the treadmill. Hiking using walking sticks. Swimming with different strokes with eyes open and closed. So we can also have the massage therapy. For the home instructions, 
educate patients of all treatment procedures, oral exercise such as moving of lips and tongue, assisted transfer technique from bed to wheelchair to chair and vice versa. Family member will be reminded to perform P run times all things of motion times seven cycles hold times ten repetitions times one set three times per week.